Hey folks, welcome back to another video on this channel, this time with the review of a chord progression tool. And I know my last review of Insta Composer was kind of a mixed bag for some people, because a lot of people watching this channel, they know their stuff. Um, um, and yeah, but sometimes for inexperienced producers like I am, um, it's a nice starting point to create some chord progressions. And this one is nothing different, uh, it's called by VA Productions and I just downloaded the demo version today and I tried it out and played around a bit with it and I want to give you some impressions from it what I think about it and um, yeah let's start the video this is how the plugin looks like here in Bitwig and I created an instance here on this track on this track is also um, a MIDI chord analyzer you can see which um, notes are being pressed here and also a pulley synth and a reverb just to play back the chords. And this plugin uh, works basically by just hitting play on the transport and you rotate around the circle here. Right on each segment here of the circle, you have a chord. You can select these chords. And in the middle, you have uh, some settings for the selected chord. You can change it in version. You can change here from uh, subdominant, tonic, and uh, dominant chords, where you can choose from and can select different chord shapes. And you can change the velocity. You can change between major and minor, and you can see which chord is actually being played here. And um, I think this is a pretty great plugin, actually, to get you started with some... Uh, chords when you have no idea what you are doing you just have a small pool of chord shapes you can select from here and then you can see or hear or try and error your way up until you have a working chord progression but in my opinion something is missing from this chord tool here which would make it even better and um, like with most chord progression tools like also with scalar 2 I have my problems because it's always try and error. There is no real guide uh, that gives you that gives you ideas of how to construct a chord progression that sounds good and what's actually the reason behind it, why it sounds good. So, for instance, on this one here, you can't change the rhythm of the chord progression. It's always this uh, three or four bar loop uh, divided into. Uh, evenly sized sections, right? So when you add your chords with the plus button, you have four chords now or uh, four chords, five chords, five, six. I think it's it goes up to eight. We have uh, now four chords here and you hit play. Now the rhythm changes because, uh, you know, you divide the, the four bar loop into four different chords. So the rhythm is pretty important for chord progressions um, uh, in general. The rhythm makes the music. It's pretty important. And of course, this is more like meant to be some kind of starting point where you have to drag out the chords to a note clip here. And then you go into the note clip in the piano roll and, you know, it did it for yourself. Um, where you, you know, tinker around you with certain notes and bring it up to the point you want to have it. But, you know, would be nice to have actually here some kind of sizing um, grapples where you can drag this around and, you know, create some kind of different rhythm. Would be nice to have. Um, another thing or problem I have with this one is, um, sure, you see that you have your multiple notes in the chord and you can mute certain notes for each chord. But you can't see actually which kind of notes are overlapping with the next chord. So you don't see what's changing basically from this chord to this chord. And it's also important sometimes, so when you're tracking out this, this again, you can see this note and this note is the same. This is pretty important actually to see, um, which gives you an indication of how harmonic or how well this chord sounds with this one because if you have yeah four notes and only one note is changing this sounds pretty harmonic um right away 
just when I disable this here. Uh, so it play. Right, this sounds pretty harmonic, and the more notes you change in each um, chord interval here, um, then the more disharmonics it sounds from this one, more or less. So. So it would be nice to see actually which notes here are overlapping and which notes are changing from this to this, for instance, right? And another problem is that it's completely try and error based. If you have no idea about harmony theory or functional harmony and you don't know what what subdominance, what 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 is a t tonic, what's a, what's dominant, what what's major and minor, and you know all these things, you're basically have to stick with just try and error. You have to pick certain dots here and then try and error your way up until you have a chord progression that sounds good for you. There's no guide, no hint or anything to, that led you to a nice chord progression. It's the same with Scalar 2 or with all the other chord uh, progression tools on the market right now um, that they give you no hint, no idea. It's nothing to learn f from from this plugin. It's just basically just click the dots and see what sticks. If you have a rough idea about functional harmony, you know exactly you have to start with the tonic in your chord progression maybe or with the dominant and then you switch to a subdominant chord then maybe do a tonic and then maybe remove this here. So you basically know the tonic is your home, your dominant is basically way out there. Um, that brings in some unstable um, harmonies and then the subdominant is basically the middleman that you know, makes a transition from tonic to dominant harmonic. So you have to pick basically a tonic or dominant first and then a subdominant in between. So this gives you basically kind of a functional working construct of chord progression. But you have to know that there's no hint in this one here. Um, but you know, you have to, you have to know it. Um, And also these dots here work in this direction that you have um, on the lower lower side here. The lower dots are basically simple chords, sh simple chord shapes, probably just major and minor. And then the more you go up, the more complex the chord gets, which means uh, the complexity means basically you add more notes and um, some more disharmonics um, or dissonances uh, in the chord itself. So if you stick to the bottom, your chord progression sounds more simple, uh, but also pleasant, automatically more pleasant. Um, but yeah, there's no hint uh, of anything how to construct a chord progression in this tool. Would be nice to have actually this here um, maybe reflected in the interface, it gives you some idea about that. Um, so yeah, let's construct something with this one here. So I would say for the first chord here, we go with the tonic, so the middle line here. Maybe go to this. The next chord would be maybe a subdominant. you have to try and error you have to basically switch between the chords and see if it progresses nicely and then we switch here to a ton uh, dominant
So yeah, I switched basically from major to minor. This is probably kind of nice, so let's play this. So now comes the part with the rhythm because this sounds pretty boring rhythmically. Um, let's see. Oh, look, it even exported here uh, four chords, which is not right. So it's probably a bug. Oh, no, it's uh, actually exporting the, the first first chord again. Okay, I see. Yeah, it's the first chord. So now we have to stretch this out here to make this a bit better. So maybe the tonic is a bit longer. Maybe disable this here so we have only the notes in the clip. Maybe this goes a bit earlier. So do you need this plugin at all? Probably not. Um, but it's nice, it's simple, it's easy to use, and uh, I think it's only 30 bucks on Plugin Boutique, which you can buy over my link in the description below. Um, but you can also use just the piano roll if you don't have the money or don't want to spend the money on a plugin. You can just use the piano roll, restrict yourself to some easy note movements from chord to chord, and also learn along the way how to construct chord progressions. So, um, this is also a way of doing it, right? It all depends on your mood, on your workflow, and how you look at things. And sometimes you have no idea what to do, so you need a tool and you whip out the tool and you play around with it. Create the simple chord progressions, flash it out afterwards in the piano roll, and um, yeah, create a song this way. So there are multiple ways of doing things. It's not one way or the other. I see a lot of comments actually under my videos when the uh, people um, tend to say, oh, well, that's not how you do it. Well, it's, you have multiple ways of doing things and there are up and downs to all sides, basically. So it's all about uh, experimentation and trying out new things and different ways of looking at things. So uh, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. Please leave a thumbs up if you liked the video, subscribe to the channel, and I would say I see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Yeah. Bye.